Welcome back to part seven, the final part of building a real Rage Bringer. We are nearly done. We have to refinish the leather grip and put on some finishing touches, and then we're all done. Let's jump into it. Last week we finished the cord wrap and risers, as well as the first coat of hide glue. This week we'll go ahead and start with wrapping the handle in leather. We're patterning it on foil and tracing it onto a piece of mercury tanned book binding leather. The thinner the leather, the better. After we trace out the actual dimensions of the grip, we then trim it to about one quarter to half an inch larger on all four sides. All four of those enlarged edges will be overlapping or folded over so they need to be as thin as possible. Here I'm using a skiving knife to accomplish that and in a moment I will be using a tungsten carbide sanding stick which is basically like permanent sandpaper to sand it as thin as I can get it. Here I've highlighted the edge of the leather with a silver marker just so you can see how thin we've gotten those edges. We're using the same exact hide glue as last week, thinned down to about a syrup consistency. I'm applying a generous amount to the top edge of the leather. This is the side of the leather that will butt up against the pommel. Once we get a good coating on there, I'm then folding this over and that will give us a nice clean edge that will be exposed right next to the pommel. We do the same exact folding technique on the guard side of the grip as well. Once you've got those clean edges that will go up against the guard and the pommel, we'll go ahead and start gluing the leather down to the grip in small sections. This is a clay sculpting tool that I'm using to make sure that that leather stays tight as the glue cools off. This glue cools off very quickly, kind of like hot glue, so the only real trick here is to work in small sections until you've worked your whole way around. This hide glue sets up in two ways. It both cools off like hot glue, but it also dries from the water that we've added. And until that water has evaporated, it stays a little bit pliable. While we let that drying process happen for the next couple of days, we're going to wrap it in cord. And that does two things. It keeps the leather tight against the grip as it dries, and it also imparts a string texture in the leather itself. This super glue here is just to secure the end of the string while we let the hide glue set up. Twenty-four to forty-eight hours later, the leather and the glue should have fully dried, so you can carefully remove the cord wrap to reveal the texture. At the last minute, I decided to use a triangle file to add just a tiny bit of detail to that peen block. We are going to age the metal on this a little bit, 
but before that takes place I've got a buffing wheel on my rotary tool and I'm applying a little bit of jeweler's rouge here and polishing up all the bronze. We don't need to go too overboard with this. The aging process will actually dull the metal up a little bit so a mirror finish is kind of pointless. We're going to be using cold blue to patina the blade. Cold blue is a process to quickly put a finish on gun barrels. It's really designed to be used on steel where it works very quickly, but you can use it on bronze. It just takes a long time to develop the color. To save us from having to submerge the bronze into the solution, we wrap it in paper towel and then we saturate the paper towel in the solution. After it's left on the bronze for 10 or 15 minutes, it develops kind of an onyx look to it. The first application of the solution will mostly wipe away, but you can develop a darker color with repeated applications. You can actually hear how much it's dulled the metal when I wipe away the excess solution. I came back later and darkened it even further to a nearly black state. We are done and don't worry I've got some beauty shots of this thing coming right after this but first I wanted to say thank you to everyone for coming along with me on this. Y'all have been awesome and I really appreciate it. I am going to do another build, but I'm not really sure what that's going to be yet. So if you have some suggestions, and I know many of you do, put them in the comments below and I'll check them out. It does not need to be a weapon, but do keep in mind that the more realistic it is, the better. And one last thing, this is a time consuming process, so I'm not sure when I will post the next video. So if you want to see that, click the subscription button, hit the notification bell, and you'll get notified when that video is posted. Pretty simple. The subscriptions also let me know that I'm doing a good job. So if you enjoy this, a subscription will tell me that. So, all right, let's check this thing out. You better sit on your hands. You better watch your tongue. You better think twice for you stick your nose where it don't belong. You need to check your tone, stop acting like a fool You best try to remember who the hell you're talking to Well, I guess we're done filming. You wanna think you're cool. You wanna be the one that people gonna look up to. You're gonna eat your words, you're gonna bite your tongue. You're gonna try to forget the time you came.